Over the last two weeks, we've been sharing details about the HALOS project aimed at rehabilitating and restoring our marine habitat. In this, the final installment, we head to Nelson Island off the north coast peninsula of Trinidad, where the scientists are testing the efficacy of their efforts. Rediscover Flow at discoverflow.co. Flow, inspired by you. Nelson Island, known for its rich history, has attracted many a visitor, and for the past four years it has been operating as a sustainable eco-development. A solar-powered system provides electricity and even drives a small desalination plant which produces portable water for the island. Surely a good example of what can be done to reduce carbon footprint. But environmental scientists want to take it one step further by looking at the surrounding blue habitat. The reef here is not immune to coral bleaching, the result of pollution and global warming. But members of the HALOS project are confident that their pilot project will prove fruitful. Reefs are built from sargasm, seaweed, carbon. They also have in them crushed oyster shells, waste oyster shells, and spent glass. So right now we are just doing small experiments throughout the island to see what propagates on them, um, you know, if, they, if we could possibly uh, propagate coral, propagate sponges to make aquascapes using the substrate on other islands. Coordinator of the HALOS project, Denise Montrose, breaks down the composition of the reef. This is a sargasm seaweed carbon plug. Uh, we're gonna, the system is built in such a way that you could actually put the stems into the reef. So you could propagate coral, sponges, whatever you choose to propagate on it. Um, and over time, we'll see how it performs. Marine researcher and conservationist Richard Joseph, a contractor on the project, has been helping to propagate and install the plugs. What you have here on Nelson Island is a kaleidoscope of colors with all different invertebrates, sponges, feather dusters, filmic crabs, and some of the, the specimens that we have in the bucket there, you'll share some of the arrow crabs. It's very interesting. Ms. Montrose says if all goes well, we will all be able to enjoy the first of its kind, a sargassum carbon-based reef at Nelson Island through scuba diving and with the help of technology. And also, um, we've been doing exhibitions with the smart buoy um, for the National Trust at different environmental uh, exhibitions and these things. So what we want to do is the, the National Trust has committed to getting screens so that when you go to the building around the Savannah, their head office, or you go down to Nelson Island, you'll be able to see via the subsea videos the live feed. And that live feed is going to um, identify the type of marine life that's passing across the screen. She says they would love to have Nelson Island designated as a marine protected environment so that more experimentation could be done there without the interference of human activity. And while coral remediation takes many years, the project is hoping to achieve some short-term goals. If we're talking about the oceanographic equipment and the integration of that equipment to give us remote monitoring and measurement we want to have that up and running by mid of next year, but we are very much dependent on um, the, the researchers and the technical folks at the IMA to do the species mapping and have it on their databases and these things. Time will tell the degree of success of the project, and of course, funding will determine the rate of expansion. Until then, we urge you to be environmentally aware reduce, reuse and recycle to ensure that you're part of the solution and not part of the problem. I am Stacey Ann Providence, keeping it green for TDT News. Healthy ecosystems provide the foundation for the sustainability of life on our planet. 
various human activities, including pollution, threatens to disrupt the delicate balance of survival of the world's ecosystems, placing many animals at risk of extinction. Pollution from sources such as trash, carbon emissions, oil spills, and pesticides can deplete resources and drive away local animal populations. Climate change also plays a significant role as global warming has led to the increased temperatures, sea levels, and ocean acidity that disrupts an ecosystem's natural balance. We are the cause, and we are the solution. If we do not protect endangered species, we will ultimately fail to protect ourselves. Rediscover Flow at discoverflow.co. Flow. Inspired by you. Everything adds up to less when you bundle with Flow. Save over $1,300 when you sign up for Flow's Everything You Need plan today. Get 300 megs internet, more TV and streaming options, plus 100 voice minutes. Visit us online or in-store for more details. Offer ends August 30th. Flow. Inspired by you.